Hello, Chill Computer Guy. Today we're in Reason 9.5. We are going to do the first of many upcoming videos on Back to the Basics. We're going to talk about the redrum today. Of all things, we're going to talk about the redrum. Um, you'll notice that there's three different channels in the redrum, and oftentimes you'll see this and you won't even think anything of it. Now, I like to avoid presets. I like to kind of plug my own samples into the redrum, build my own kind of a set and whatnot. Um, but understanding the difference between the three of these is a little bit more vital than you would think. Um, everything from the length up is exactly the same in all channels. Below Everything below the length, however, is, is slightly different. You'll see every single channel has a pitch, but you'll see channel 6 and 7 have a bend that goes along with the pitch. And then every single channel also has a velocity, but you'll see channel 1, 2, and 10 have a tone as channel 3, 4, 5, 8 and 9 have a starting position. That's where the sample starts. And then 6 and 7 have a rate, which has to do with the bend. We're not going to start out by, what I did is I plugged the same sample into channel 1, channel 3, and channel 6. So basically one, of, one sample for each variation. Now we're going to go ahead and hit run here. And you'll see something's going to happen. This particular ch uh, sample, let's go ahead and play this. So you can see that, that this particular sample that I got loaded in here is pretty long. So you can see what I've done is I have put in one single step to trigger that sample. But because that sample is so long, it's just going to keep playing. And then when it gets triggered again, it's just going to kind of fold back onto itself. So if I hit play at this time, you'll see that that's going to be the behavior. So now as you can hear, the sample that I have loaded into these three is a very long sample. On step number one, it's going to trigger the sample, but the sample is so long that it's going to get triggered again and again. And it's going to kind of fold back onto itself, kind of like a delay, if you will. Um, so that's where the length parameter comes in. This is the first parameter we're going to discuss here in the redrum is the length. This is the length of the sample. I'm going to hit run, and you're going to hear this kind of fold back onto itself. And then we're going to decrease the length, and you'll see kind of what that's all about. And so that's the length parameter, very important. Right next to that, you'll see there's a switch. This is basically a, a kind of a slow decay, and then you have kind of an instant uh, decay here. So this is kind of the decay mode, if you will. Let's go ahead and play this. We'll show you the difference between those two. So that's how that works. So that explains the length and then basically the decay style. Is it is it slowly fade out or does it just cut off based on the length? Now above that is the level and the velocity. That just basically has to do with the volume of the sample. In other words, you can kind of mix your samples together right here in the redrum. Now you have a pan on top of that. That's self-explanatory. You can pan your sample to the left and to the right. Above that you have the S1 and the S2. Now these are sends. Now, if you flip the rack around, you'll see that we have two sends in the back here. Okay, so I went ahead and hooked up some scopes here. And uh, as I play this sample, I'm going to send that signal out through the send outputs. Now, the advantage of doing this is if you send the signal out to, let's say, a reverb or a delay or whatever, you can control the amount of that signal that you're sending to the effect. And then the effect will be returned to two mix channels. So if I hit play here, as I increase this, you're going to see that show up on the scope there. Okay. 
this is a uh, hugely powerful when you're putting your drums together the fact that you can have two sends now below the length parameter and the sends and returns and all that is the pitch now you can control the pitch of your sample And then below that, you have a tone and then a velocity. Now, this is the effect of the velocity on the tone. Okay? So this is going to affect if you hit the key hard or if you hit the key soft, it's going to affect the tone. So you could almost think of it as kind of like a treble, if you will. But yeah, just know if this velocity is cranked up, then the pressure of the key is going to affect the tone quite a bit. And if it's down here, it's not going to affect it nearly as much. But the tone parameter, it's it's subtle. It's not it's not the most useful parameter in the world. Um, I prefer using the pitch. But uh, again, it just gives you more options so you can really get just the sound you want with your particular drum piece. We're going to move on to, uh, let me see, channel 3. Now on channel 3, we have a start parameter, and that's just basically where the sample starts. Now that start parameter is really handy. You can really kind of control your transient if there's a, a little bit of uh, noise before your sample starts. Uh, you can butt it right up against the transient, or you can kind of almost use this as a transient shaper, if you will, to kind of cut out some of the initial attack. Um, let's go ahead and listen to that. Then of course you have your velocity, which again controls your start. So if I crank this all the way up, so let's go ahead and we'll put a soft velocity in here and then we'll put a hard velocity in here. And so what you'll notice is the way this is gonna affect the start of the sample. So let's play this and mess around with these two parameters and see what we get. So what's very powerful about this, what I recommend using these channels for is maybe your hi-hats because you can affect the initial transient of your hi-hat and then have the velocity affect the start. And so by altering the velocity of your hi-hat, you can really get a lot of different variation. Not only are you getting variation in the velocity itself, but you're getting slight variation in the start time of the actual sample. So very powerful and again with the redrum a lot of people don't either they ignore these or they just don't even they just put their drums in here and they don't realize that they have a lot of different controls based on which one of the three variations there are here in the redrum in other words one two and ten are the same three four five eight and nine are a second type of variation and then you have six and seven which is even a third variation and we're going to actually go over channel six next and you can see here again i'm going to bring my length down so it doesn't ring out forever we have a pitch bend as well as a rate and uh how this this is probably the six and seven are probably the most uh confusing channels what you're basically doing is you, you have a pitch and then the bend, you can actually bend this and the rate of the bend, these channels here are pretty confusing to explain. The best thing, what I would recommend is just throw your sample in here and kind of tweak some of these parameters because you do have a lot of kind of control when you start to alter the, the velocity of your notes in here again drum pattern should have variation in velocity but when you start to kind of alter the velocity you can really kind of mess with some of these parameters and get some very uh, unique um, results you know let's go ahead and play this and we'll kind of try to show you what this does
So you can see how quickly I just put two little triggers on here, put a sample in here, messed around with some parameters, and I have something that is a potential hook here. What's unique about the redrum is these channels are very powerful when you kind of think outside the box as far as just putting your sample in and, and programming uh, a sequence down here, you know. Let's go ahead and play that again and you'll see what I'm talking about. And again, you can send this, you can send these out through the send and then uh, put them through some effects and then return them back to a separate mix channel. So just throw the redrum in, throw your samples in here. When you start to add the velocity, the variation, and then start to tweak some of these parameters, then use your send and returns. So, you know, this is three channels here. You can send these out to effects and then return them on separate uh, uh, mix, mix channels. You know, when you kind of start combining all that stuff together, you really have a lot of power um, just here in the redrum. And so, uh, yeah, that's, that's basically the redrum. Just remember, there's three different types of channels, there's, and all three of those different types of channels lend themselves to unique possibilities when you start to throw your samples in and start to manipulate. You know, throw in a sequence, right click, send a track, then throw some shuffle on it. You know, it kind of goes from there. So anyway, I just wanted to speak a little bit about the redrum because I think a lot of the, uh, the, the technical aspects of the redrum often get overlooked. So anyway, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, give a thumbs up, give a comment, and uh, we're going to have more of these just kind of quick tip fundamental things. Uh, we're going to go back in time here a little bit. The redrum, you know, it's an old, it's, a, it's an instrument that's been around forever, but there's a lot of, like I say, unique things about it. So we're going to go into a lot of like the basic kind of fundamentals of, uh, of producing music here in Reason. And this is uh, the first one. We're going to have many, many more. So be sure to click, click that little bell because if you click that bell, You'll get notified when there's a new tutorial out because like i say i might do 10 of these in a day well maybe not that but then i might have a couple of weeks go by where i don't do any just because life work time my you know it's just it's kind of a never know when i'm gonna get a chance to lay some of these down so uh thanks again for watching we'll see you guys again